top producers behave in a slightly different way. The majority of top producers who follow a specific system if they do open houses, the majority of them will do an open house in order to promote their new listing to the other homeowners in the area. And that's what, really what it's all about. It's about promoting your listing to the other homeowners in the area, in the surrounding areas. All right. So, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So what do you want to do with your open house? First of all, you need to treat it as a tool. Okay. It's a tool for you to get your name out, to brand yourself. And you really must understand how to use it in order to promote your brand. So top producers really invest time and money to promote their open houses because they want to get their name out there with other sellers that are planning on selling. A broker's open house, let's divide these into th segments. I do believe in the broker's open and I think everybody should, should have one. So a broker's open is actually done to create multiple showings momentum by inviting all the active agents to see and to promote your listing. What I love about getting listing is that you actually, basically, it's almost like you're the employer of, of all the agents in the area. They're bringing their buyers to your listing and then you are in control. A broker's open gives you actual opportunity to promote yourself to the other active agents in town. Uh, and it's also, if you do it the right way, it can give you real feedback that should go back to the seller about the price and the marketability of the property. What does that mean? A lot of agents in the area who knows the area very well will give you feedback. Hey, I think it's overpriced. Hey, it's a great listing. When can I show to my buyers? If, you, if it's really priced correctly, you're gonna see a lot of these agents approaching you, trying to schedule showings ASAP. And that means that you are at the right place with the right price and uh, it's going to get sold fairly quickly. So you should try that and see how it works for you. So you're using it in like a tool. You want to ask people. So any, any agents who shows up, you want to contact these people and you want to make sure that they give you feedback. Hey, Elvis, what did you think about the house uh, yesterday when you came to my open house? What did you think about? You think, did you like the price? Do you think the price is right? Like ask specific questions and then get the answers you need. Bring all these answers back to the seller. It's time for you to do the showings. So the brokers open is almost like announcing to all the agents in the area and all the brokers in the area. Here is a new listing. Bring your buyers over, make some offers. That's what it's all about. And, and the, that's the only open house that I used to do on my listings because any other open house, in my opinion, is a waste of time. Public open house. An open house is one of the best tools to promote your brand. Throughout door knocking, okay, you do a door knocking blast, meaning you go out there and you are giving private invitations to the neighbors and you tell them that they need to arrive at a certain time. This is a private open house. It's not open house to the public, but just by invitation only. And when you do it the right way, this kind of open house can easily get you a lot of other listings. We know when someone sells, a head, someone sells a house, two more will sell right away. Because we know that, this is a very powerful tool for you to go out there and grab the next coming up listings. Sometimes open house can also get serious buyers, obviously, to visit your listing. Um, but don't bank on it. Like, don't do your open house for that purpose. Your open house should be done to find other sellers that are interested in selling. <laughs> open house done correctly, how to do it. Remove clutter from the house. Obviously, you're not gonna do that. You're gonna recommend the seller to remove clutter from the house, the yard, the garage, etc. The house need to be neat, organized, clean. Um, some real estate agents, especially at high end, they offer cleaning services for the, for the sellers. So they will send their own cleaning service out there to clean the house and to organize it. Open all the lights inside and out. Prepare the sign sheet with the name, email address, cell phone, and all that stuff. So you need to have a sign sheet, normally the kitchen counter, people walking in, please sign in. Every person coming in has to give you their details. If it's an agent with a buyer, the agent will sign in uh, on behalf of their buyer. If it's a buyer just walking in, the buyer has to give you the details. If they don't want to give it to you, that's a problem. 
you don't want to have people just walk in without knowing who they are. So when they walk in, you approach, you say, hi, welcome to the open house. My name is, will you please fill out the sign-in sheet? Next, prepare property info sheet with your information on it. Now, I always, when I did this kind of open houses, again, I told you I did it for the invitation only. Uh, I would also hook up with a mortgage broker that I worked with. And normally I would have at least two of them uh, because I had sometimes two, three open houses in the same day. So anyways, you work with a mortgage broker to sponsor your open house. They will grab the information from all the walk-in buyers that are coming in. So they're getting something out of it. Therefore, they pay for it. You do it. Uh, and what they should give you for that, normally they will bring in some snacks, drinks, you know, some, sometimes they bring in like pizza or sushi or whatever. And then they will also help you by creating flyers on the property. You're going to have your information on it and maybe also their info will go on as well. These are some, you know, examples of what it should look like. Okay, give you just an example. Address, price, you have to pick the right photos and then you're gonna put in some description. Um, and then obviously this is the agent's information over here and this is the lender. So when people walk in, they have that available. All right, next. Before the open house, what, what do you need to do before the open house? This is very important, guys, so pay attention. So you have to prepare an open house private invitation for neighbors. The minimum is 250. This has to be done door knocking. Right now, COVID-19, what should you do? You can mail it out. You can send a mail to 250 homes around the listing, and that's gonna get you the same uh, kind of similar results. You are promoting your listing, uh, but on this open house private invitation, you want to, obviously COVID-19, we have to do these things in a different way, slightly different way. Uh, you might even do open house on Zoom, where you're going to present the house to the neighbors, so you can actually send them postcards to 250 homes. I, I used to do 500. It's minimum 250. It depends on how much money you want to invest in your business. So I would, I would uh, every time that I list a house, I would send 500 postcards and if I had the time to door knock, I would go do that. If I don't, I would just mail it out and then invite these people to a private open and conduct the private open. Now, normally what you're gonna have is sellers in the area that are thinking about selling maybe now or in the new future. They come over to take a look at the house, number one. They wanna see what the house looks like. Number two, they wanna find out, okay, if this house is 350, how much is mine gonna be worth? So you're going to see a lot of sellers walking in. And that's when you need to be, you know, at your A game. You got to throw your A game right there because that's, you know, the basically this is the best exposure you have for yourself and your brand. Prepare an open house flyer with basic information about the house, just like I showed you before. You also want to have contracts and disclosures just in case a buyer walks in and they want to make an offer. You also want to start door knocking campaign three days prior to open house. So we're talking, you know, uh, hopefully post COVID, uh, you're going to be doing that. But in COVID, what I suggest you to do is you send out those uh, invitations. The private invitations will be to a virtual open house, which you will have a camera on you. And you're going to be walking through the property live showing these people the property. Door knock, a minimum of 10 blocks radius. So post COVID-19, you're going to start door knocking a campaign three days prior. You want to give out 250 flyers. It takes time, 250 private invitations. You want to reach each property owner. So you're going to go in the morning times between like 8 and 11. Then you're going to go in the afternoon between 4 and 6, door knocking, giving out these invitations. By the way, when you do that, that's by itself branding. So you're branding yourself, you're there, so you need to be you know, dressed professionally. And, and do the stuff the right way. Door knocking. You have to door knock a minimum of, of 10 block radius because, I mean, you would say in each block, you should have about 20, depending on, on, on where we are, but say between 10 and 20 houses. 
Um, so if you have, if you need to do 250 and you only have 10 houses on each block, obviously you got to do 25 block radius. Prepare balloons and signage and you do all that stuff. So three days before you do this uh, private invitation open, you go door knocking, you start door knocking. It's going to take you about three days to complete all the door knocking and then you're going to do the actual open. When you do open, there's no, you don't need to open for more than about two hours. Um, and you should expect about just, I mean, I'm giving you rough numbers here. You're looking at about 3% people showing up, 3%, which will give you the next two sellers in your neighborhood, the next four or five sellers in your neighborhood. These are the people that are going to come and take a look at the property at a private open. This is a very, very, very powerful tool. If you use it, you got to do it correctly. All right. The day of the open house, you're going to start at 8 a.m. and place minimum of 10. Now, this is very important. Some people don't do that. Place a minimum. What does it mean? Minimum of 10. It means at least 10 signs. The more, the better. Branded, branded open house signs around the property. This gives you an opportunity. By the way, it also gives you permission because normally you cannot do that. You can't just throw your signs everywhere. But when you do an open house, the towns allow you to do that. So you have like three hours on a weekend to just brand yourself. Now I've seen agents putting a sign, one sign outside the house and one sign at the corners. So you got like three signs for an open house, which to me is ridiculous. You can actually um, promote your business from 8 a.m. until like 5 p.m. on weekends and have signage everywhere with your name, your face, open house, and have anyone who drives in the neighborhood see you. They see your signs, they see your face, they see your brand name. You can do that every weekend. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about waiting in a house for buyers to walk in and to purchase the property. That's dumb in my opinion. And it's not gonna happen often. You're gonna have a buyer walking in and purchasing the house they just see you know, for the first time. That makes no sense. But what you will see, and you will see this very often, you're going to see a lot of people looking at your signs and you want to have also, hopefully you have your phone number on your open house sign because sometimes they call you, hey, where is the house? I'm driving outside. I want to find, I want to, you know, and then you can give them directions, which gives you another opportunity to contact these people. You have their phone number. So you start at 8 a.m. and you start placing minimum of 10 branded open house signs your name your company name your telephone number and um, hopefully is on the sign with some arrows leading them to the property you should start placing them about a couple of blocks away from the house and then going all the way towards the house so you got four corners of, of each property has four corners on the blocks you want to you know complete those four corners you got four signs right there one in front of the house is five then you want to take maybe one or two blocks away with, you know, signs pointing to your open house. Sometimes you might get those stolen. Some, you know, some of your competition might grab one of those, which happens all the time. I used to order open house signs almost every month. Um, it's just part of the business. All right. From 9 to 10, 10.30, door knock, the same homes you gave private invitations to. And basically invite them again. Now, I would normally do this with another person working with me so we can complete the assignment faster. You can pay them, you know, just for like 50 bucks for two, two three hours, you know, doing that, preparing the open house with you, putting signage out, door knocking, you know, and, and then all the buyers that are coming in can go to that person that's helping you because you're really not looking for buyer's leads if you follow my system. All right, next, at 10.30, Go to the house and prepare. You have to put some candles out, flyers, open, open all the lights, all the windows, you know, in the summertime, obviously. And you need to make the house look presentable and bright, if possible. And if you did everything prior, then you should be good to go. All right, now private invite will be between 11 and 12, and then 12.30 on, you can do your public open. So you're giving them about an hour and a half for the private invitation to arrive. You can also do 11 to one, and then one to four public open. Um, and think about that. You are not interested in the buyers necessarily. You're interested in your branding. 
in your name, in your signage, being out there, and so many people looking at it every weekend. That's what it's all about. Okay, next. During the open house, make sure that the owners are not home. Buyers don't feel comfortable if owners are home. Remember to always smile and be nice. Obviously, that's a given. Be excited and enthusiastic. It's always better to have another happy and positive agent with you, just like I said before, or the mortgage rep can be there as well. Make sure every guest signs the sign-up sheet with all their details. You want to have cell phones, email addresses, names, okay? And let me tell you something from my experience. Many times when people walk in and you give them a pen and you let them do it themselves, you're not going to be able to read what these people wrote. So sometimes it's best if you ask them, what's your name, what's your email address, what's your phone number, verify, and then it's in your hand writing and you know exactly what it is. If you're giving this assignment to the mortgage rep, let the mortgage rep do it and then share with you all those leads. Next, make sure uh, that you're going to let all the guests tour the house and be available to answer all the, their questions. Obviously, you want to you know, walk through with them. You're not going to just have strangers walk through the house and steal all the jewelry. You want to be with them. You want to, you know, just be right behind them. And if they ask you any questions, you're there to provide answers. Now, I don't like to have too many people tour a house at the same time. So if it's me and another agent, the other agent will be in the front uh, greeting people, asking them to wait a second until the people that are inside are finishing up. And then we allow the next person in. In COVID-19, it should be that, like that as well. Uh, so you should have no problem with that. Now, everything I'm teaching you to do here is obviously, you know, post-COVID. Um, during COVID, we have issues to do open houses. And what I suggest to do is online open houses, online actual live walkthrough videos that you can do a couple of times. You can do one at 11, you can do another one at 11.30, another one at 12, and you can do one every half hour for like two, three hours. All right, next. Um, you want to give every guest a flyer and your business card, all right? And you want to remember that although the sellers believe that the main purpose of an open house is to actually find a buyer for their home, don't forget, for you, it is simply a tool to promote your brand. So you want to plan it and execute wisely. That's all we're going to talk about in open houses. There's really not much left to be said. Questions? Uh, yes, Ron. I have a question in regards to uh, when you said doing the mail out for the open houses for the invitations. Um, is it like how do we get the address around or are we going in to deliver um or putting it in the post box you like can. just walk, you know walk in okay it's, it's illegal to put things in mailboxes the mailbox belongs to the government when you do that you and someone catches you you get in trouble so what you want to do is you can door knock which is really what the best way to do it but right now covid19 you can't door knock so what are you going to do? You're going to actually purchase the list. You can purchase the list from Vista, give them the address, ask for 250 houses around this particular property. You can actually request, uh, you know, 250 addresses of homeowners in a zip code close to the house. Um, you can give a street name. You can basically you purchase the list from Vista. And then Vista does the mailing for you. So you don't need to do anything. You just need to design the postcard. And that's it. You're done. Um, another way to do that, and again, I, I love talking about farming because for me, geographical farming is one of the best tools that I've used to get repeat business and take over the entire neighborhood. What I just told you, I would do, guys, you need to understand, I would get like minimum, minimum, two listings every week. So if I pick up two listings every week, I got to plan ahead all these open houses. If you drove by neighborhoods where I was active, you would probably see 30, 40 of my signs on the streets. There was, my name was everywhere in the town on weekends. So, I mean, Saturday, Sundays, my name is everywhere, literally 40, 40 signs on, on two, three, four, sometimes five listings. So, if you use it the right way, you can take over a neighborhood. 
and that's going to obviously help you that you don't have to kill yourself on cold calling and, and calling just listed just sold or going after fees was expired all the time. If you do farming smartly and you're sending out mail every two weeks, like I told you, if you choose, say at least minimum, 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 750 homes, but it should really be minimum 1,000. So if you choose minimum 1,000 homes in an area and you're sending them something in the mail every two weeks, it will take 18 months for you to be the number one listing agent in that neighborhood but you got to invest the money. You're talking about 1,000 postcards cost you about 700 bucks with mail out, say 600, 670, just about 670 right now. And you're doing it every two weeks. So you're talking about roughly about 1350 coming out of your pocket, $1,350 every month that's feeding this specific agenda. And you got to do that for 18 months. So calculate, you know, that times 18, you're looking at about 20, 25 grand invested in your business, but trust me, the return is phenomenal. Um, but you have to be, a, you know, able to do that. And if you don't have any money to invest in your business to beginnings, then you do door knocking, door knocking, door knocking, door knocking, door knocking. If it's COVID-19, you, you're not left with much to do. You can cold call, just list it, just sold from, the leads you're purchasing. You can also purchase leads, uh, Damaris, from uh, the Red X. If you go to the Red X.com, the T H E Red, and then the letter X.com, you can purchase leads in any area uh, and then farm like it should be farmed. Elvis is mailing 1000 and it's costing him about 550 per mailing. You get a discount on postage if you are saturating an area. Okay, good, good to know. Uh, when you look at the big picture, between 550 and 670 is really not much of a difference, but it's okay. Hey, the, the cheaper, the better. A another way to do this is to actually hook up with a mortgage broker and let them pay half. A mortgage broker will pick up the back portion of the postcard, you pick up the front, and then you share the cost, 50-50. So if it's 670, now it's, uh, you know, 340, $340 or $670 a month going out, you got a thousand uh, postcards going out every two weeks. Trust me, you're going to get some phone calls. Uh, and then again, remember, I tell you this all the time, you're getting phone calls, you need to know what to do with these phone calls. If you don't know what to say when people call you, you don't know how to do the follow-up, you don't know how to pre-qualify your leads, your appointments, pre-listing package, listing presentation, handing objections. If you don't know how to do all that stuff and you jump with postcards and then you're getting bombarded with phone calls, but you're not really in a position to perform, you're going to lose a lot of opportunities. But then, hey, 70% of people never interview more than one agent. So you can get lucky many times. You get a phone call. Hi, uh, Elvis, we just saw your postcard. We live in Attleboro and we're interested in, you know, maybe think about listing our property sometime in the next three months. You know, we'd like to know how much the home is worth. Please give us a call back. Blah, 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 blah. That's what I'm talking about. You want to get those phone calls. And then you want to go out and attack. When they call you, they're calling you. If you're not calling them back, by the way, within maximum 15 minutes, you're going to have some issues. So if someone called you, for example, at 8 a.m. or 8.45, you already started prospecting. You're going to prospect until 11 o'clock. At 11 o'clock on the spot, you have to call them back. These are the kind of leads you don't want to play with because if, if you're not calling them back and they get frustrated, if they want like some, if, if it's someone who is seeking an immediate attention and many of them do, you lose them so quickly. So you got to be hands on, you got to be ready. <laughs>